<laughs> sorry, sorry for my delay. Well, uh, we hope that we can uh, open up any night uh, as, as well as is working. As working, um, but we'll have to see, of course, uh, which limitations uh, will still be in. Limitations every week, then. We don't have them anymore, so it's it's kind of kind of weird right now. But we're we're preparing for the worst, but we're hoping for the best best situation. So like yeah. Oh sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, we have over forty thousand uh, positive people every day, so. <laughs> Oh, yeah, unfortunately, they, they lifted everything. Then two weeks after that, they said, oh, the cases are uh, are at the new record. Let's switch things up. And every, almost every town got new, its own rules. It's, I mean, the location is in Lauer, Austria. The, the regulations are more loose than in Vienna itself. So. We are hopeful that uh, for in archers that there are very low limitations or yeah. I mean, we want to be everybody to be to be and to feel safe. So, but we also don't want uh, everybody to don't feel very well going through a convention and uh, are afraid to touch even anything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I try to get um, I mean, some food trucks will be from last year because uh, lots of feedback were that they were great and they loved it. But I also try to find something new to change so that not everybody sells the same thing and stuff. So it's kind of that you can choose from uh, Asian food or something like this to uh, burgers and uh, yeah and i hope that we will get a little bit new or uh, space or more space so i can uh, get some new uh, uh, food trucks over there so yeah so we can switch things up a bit yeah that's what i hope for and also for the merchandise area for the merch uh we hope that uh, we are planning to get uh, more uh, tables and spaces yeah. 
Well, great. So you will, because you were last time the first time actually there. Yeah. In the new, so I know that when you change the place, you have to find better use of it after a while. So yeah, it's learning from experience. Exactly. Excellent. Last last year we had a limitation uh, of distance uh, too. And for this we, year, we are hoping uh, that we don't have to distance as much as last year. And so we can uh, bring a more variety into the convention. But still, from my experience and from seeing things, the people were wearing the face mask. They, I didn't see that they made any problems. So for me, I, I saw that people were so uh, civilized. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Great. Everybody was pretty much happy that we can hold a convention, and they were pretty happy to go on the convention. So everybody, everybody worked together pretty much. Great. Okay. Uh, can I switch to Adam, or you have anything more to say about the preparation? Sure. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, Adam. You are preparing Anime Fest in yeah. a, in a few weeks. You st you got you told me you got new places in the um, expo and a lot of news. So please share your. Uh... Yeah, we we planned quite a lot of new things like bigger venue. Um, yeah, uh, for 2020. So we planned uh, many improvements, uh, which unfortunately couldn't take place. So we are now implementing what was planned for two years ago and uh, so yeah we adding one more big hall for like uh, lectures and discussions and uh, big new place for consoles and computer games and board games and we also because we are now we now have two buildings in the expo we have also quite a lot of place in between them so we would like to place quite a lot of food trucks on the empty space outside and yeah but uh, we started planning in like January and we were happy that we were able to fix all things into place and but now uh, one building at the expo is used as a center for immigrants so now we have to like improvise a bit because the exhibition center does not have enough uh, furniture like we need quite a lot of tables for merchants and stuff like that and they they need to find more equipment somewhere else. Uh, so what we were able to plan in January, we now have to like redo again. But uh, I think we are now well prepared for everything. <laughs> and we are in three hours starting with ticket pre-sale. So, uh, we are quite unsure how many people, because of the three-year gap from the last event, how many people will want to come. But we hope that it will be at least the same number as in 2019. Um, yeah. <laughs> so tomorrow I will be either very happy or very sad based on the first numbers from tickets. I, I must say from experience from the pre be, before 2020, I think you had all, almost sold it out in a few hours. So I think yeah, yeah, they, people will all... be hungry. <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. Because I, I, it, you had um, actually two years you didn't, you weren't able to yeah. do the convention. So I, I think people are really waiting for it. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> and but, yeah, we, we hope that all the all the new things that we. Uh, are preparing will like uh, make people people want to come so yeah 
An another question from the organ organizer's point of view. Uh, this two years um, gap, did it somehow have impact on the number of volunteers or people preparing the, uh, the convention? Yeah, um, yeah, uh, quite a big impact, I would say. Um, well, although we weren't able to do Anime Fest for two years, we at least were able to do cosplay ball each year, which is much smaller, so we were able to like squeeze into limitations. And even there, when we need like I don't know, thirty people organizers on the cosplay ball, and even there, there was half people, half of the organizers from 2019 were missing in 2020. So, uh, yeah. And now at Anime Fest, we are right now trying to gather all the volunteers from previous years. And we have about half the people that we need. Uh, so we ask every volunteer to bring at least one friend. <laughs> and we hope that we will somehow be able to fill all the positions. Yeah. Yeah, but you have got still two months. I know you have to prepare yeah, them yeah. beforehand, but I think it's the time like, you know of um, the exams and things, so maybe people will sort it yeah. out. It's, yeah, our dates are usually like um, start of the exam period at college and universities in Brno. So people just finished regular studying and now enjoying a few days of free time before their exam starts. So we hope that they can like give some free time to anime fest and yeah <laughs> but we we even we don't need to train them a lot like if we get some people like two weeks before the event they can still do the basic stuff i i guess that's the same everywhere <laughs> yes yes the people who are working regularly do this for a long time so yeah uh, okay um i'll ask now ivan are you here Yes, yes. Okay, so, so tell us about will... Sferacon and your situation, please. Uh, I will first. I will talk about volunteers because I think that all of us have the same problem. In these two years, I think, I think we lost more than eighty percent of our vol volunteers. Maybe something less, but about eighty percent, which is a lot. Uh, I think right now. Let's say more than 50% of people are still not willing to participate uh, in events which are organized uh, inside, and that's a big problem. But uh, in uh, Croatia, uh, we are having now not so much problem with uh, restrictions because, let's say, we are uh, <laughs> we are summer country, and right now more than seventy percent of country is, is open, and uh, we have almost no re restrictions. And this will will be the first year after two years that we will be back at our faculty finally. But honestly, we still don't know uh, in May what will be restrictions. Uh, right now we know that uh, if all our visitors will have a uh, COVID pass, then we will be like uh, three to four thousand people. And if we are not uh, with COVID passes, I think it's less than thousand people. So we will see what will be in May. Uh, these two years, it was quite stressful. Uh, we had uh, Sferacon, first it was online, and we had also two which was outside. Uh, we put it in summer, in summer because, as I said, we are a summer country, and 
rig restrictions were left off, but at that case, we also had like about 500 to 600 people, and that was maximum because people don't want to go on uh, events where uh, where there's a lot of people. So that was a big problem also. But for this year, I think we will have like 2019 or maybe even better. Uh, and a lot of people are asking us you know, right now, okay, are you doing a convention and uh, what will be like, uh, you will have COVID passes and, and, and everything. Uh, because I think that still people are, people are afraid and uh, we had a lot of talks with our government and everything uh, because of that, but I think it will be okay to make. We also have uh, great great guests for for this year. Uh, for our first guest, uh, we will have uh, Brad Moyer. Uh, he's a guy who did uh, Darth, Vader, Darth Vader helmet, so it will be quite fun. Anything else? Did you, hear, Do you want to share? Hear me? Anything? I think. I think. I think I said a lot of things, but uh, I would also like to to ask uh, how is in in your countries uh, because uh, I know that in for example I know that in uh, in Austria you had a uh, quite hectic <laughs> re re restrictions. So what do you think you will have now? Um. In regards of um, guests of honor, we are we are pretty much staying in Europe this year because it's easier to get a uh, guest of honor from Europe than to risk it that to get, for example, somebody like Lady Beard or some over uh, overseas guests that maybe can't uh, enter the country if restrictions are getting high again. Uh, we have, for example, uh, Captain Ghostly for, from Belgium. Uh, we have uh, Pugovka from Ukraine. And we've got an Italic um, Final Fantasy metal cover band called uh, Chocobo, Chocobo Band. Uh, and they are playing uh, Black Majors, Nobuo Eomatsu, and the whole uh the whole uh final fantasy soundtracks for example i think we've got the same situations and we are focusing also on guests uh, from europe because also the same the problem is with japan and all the america and also britain so um, and also you know traveling from far away and when the restrictions are changing, uh, it's also always a headache. Yeah, um, absolutely. We were just, uh, I, I, didn't, I, I don't know if you uh, saw, but after 18 years of our existence and cooperation with the uh, Japanese embassy, we were given a word of the uh, Japanese Ministry of Foreign Affairs for a long-term um, contribution of spreading uh, Japanese culture that was on uh, this first day and there we discussed uh, how is it going in Japan with in terms of visitors and uh, traveling and we yeah. were told that previously they had only 2,000 people uh, that were allowed uh, a month to enter Japan and most of them were repatriate uh, re uh, people, people returning back home to Japan. Yes. Now they are, uh, have uh, risen the limit to 5,000 people a month. So um, this is quite a problem if you want to invite a Japanese cosplayer if uh, the patient will be able to get, come back. So um, that's a big major headache. And um, for, tr uh, for tourists, because we also wanted to visit Japan again in back in 2020, so maybe next year they will uh, leave the limits. So. Yeah, tourists have a pretty hard time getting to Japan right now. That's true. So um, 
that's why we are focusing on European guests. Um, Matthias or Captain Ghostly actually, <laughs> uh, because we are cooperating with the cosplay shop, uh, is coming as regular. And many who were here want to, well, were contacting us that they want to come, so I think we will focus on some of the best guests that people liked because we got a good relationship uh, with them from previous years. And um, also, um, for example, you, I, I really uh, appreciate that you get these concerts at your conventions, but for example, our visitors mostly don't take, don't care about con uh, con concerts. For example, we got the wonderful guest, uh, Shiroku, uh, last year, and people didn't come to her concert, so I was quite sad for, for that. So, um, uh, that's, uh, and also previously we got, uh, we, had, we had other bands, uh, yeah. either J-pop or covers of game music or um, some other stuff, and yeah, people didn't, uh, well, <laughs> show interest in coming to the concert. Maybe it's some specialty of our country, I don't know, but... Uh, 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 we started uh, We started with concerts uh, many years ago. Uh, uh, I remember I, I, w I was at every concert since 2015. Then it was uh, at 2015, it was an extra day, the day before. Um, and right now we try to get at least one concert uh, during the convention. Our layout is of the convention is a bit different from yours. Yours is kind of spaced out and we have a big focus on the main stage. We have a side stage too and various other areas, uh, but yours is more balanced in that area and ours is more focused on the main stage and where everything happens and most of the people enjoy the concert because it's there. I think it's a, I think a, a different take. Maybe the visitors have different focus on. Because, exactly. Yeah. Adam, we, sorry, we didn't uh, let you. Oh well, it's the basically the same. We uh, only have guests from Europe this year, and. Again, we had a lineup of guests like confirmed for 2020 and all of them confirmed now. So we are just <laughs> copying. And for now, we have confirmed several cosplay guests uh, from around Europe. And uh, as you mentioned, Shiroku, she's also coming. And we are not planning separate concert, but... Uh, like include a few songs in the official opening ceremony which is which we try to like balance um, or combine like this popular songs and some traditional japanese culture thing <laughs> which we are now trying to put together um yeah so we uh and we also have a few Mm, so we have several stages around the area, so we can't like put events on one place, and so we need to, or we can, like we have main stage for like uh, cosplay contests and main main guests and stuff like that, and then we have two more stages for other program and other events so uh, we try to like balance the program between several stages uh, and we need to we will see how bigger venue will help in like distributing people around the area so it's that's, first time for that's, a... that's always a wonder how the people will react to new um... yeah situations and yeah and now they also have to like walk between buildings some 200 meters between buildings so i hope they will make it from one to another 
but we have also a nice place like the outside outside area is like nice for photo shoots so i hope we will see a lot of cosplayers outside but the entire expo is really wonderful all those uh, glasses and the windows yeah. It's really wonderful for photo shoots, not only inside but also uh, uh, yeah, not yeah. only outside but also inside. So, yeah. Yeah, it's a it's a great building originally built uh, like I don't know 100 years ago for some national expo, and it's like really nice architecture. <laughs> yeah, but it's quite hard to build a stage with a proper sound system. Yeah. No one in 1920, no one planned for streaming contests and screening anime. So, like, our sound guys are always getting headache from preparing all. <laughs> yeah. But you got a lot of experience, so you will work yeah. those. <laughs> Okay, um, regarding uh, maybe my other question, uh, we are part of some international cosplay contests and other con international contests. Um, how will it be going this year? Um, because I know during the COVID some finals didn't take place uh, or things were limited. How is it, uh, what are your, how is, or what are your plans in this area for this year? How do you see it? Okay, I can talk for for that. First of all, our cosplays, uh, when we ask them in uh, COVID that uh, we do some cosplay comp competition, they told us, okay, we are planning to do, but honestly, we are not willing to participate in contests where there will be a, a lot of people. And we thought, what to do? And... The easiest way was to just say, okay, we will don't have any cosplay competition. Uh, but for this year, uh, we will have a cosplay competition, but we still don't know uh, how we will do that. Because some of them uh, told us that they are not willing to participate if people are don't have masks uh, on, on their faces and everything, and I think that if we are doing cosplay competition and you need to talk and everything, that you can't have mask on your face, and that it's very hard to have a, some cosplay and have a mask on your face. So we are now just thinking also what to do and how to have cosplay competition, but we are planning to do it. Definitely. And the problem is uh, that the competitors want other competitors to have masks, or who does want to have the mask? Because I uh, some of them, some of them, some of the competitors want to have masks, and they are not willing to participate if other competitors don't have masks. Okay. Uh, our only yes. limitation now is that uh, we have to wear masks at the event, so that's sold out. <laughs> but not, but not when uh, doing a performance or a lecture, because you are doing. Yes, yes, yes. But but they they want to have like on uh, performance. They told us that they would like to have masks, and every of them to have masks. Oh my gosh. Well, it, it can be a possibility to include the face mask in your cosplay, for example, Sub Zero. But for diff, or if That's you good. wear a full <laughs> visor, but for many cosplays, it ain't possible. That's true. Yeah. Or main an alternative, but, but then it's not a cosplay, but yeah, maybe the cosplay with some. Uh, additional mask somehow incorporated for example as you have the cosplay ball people come in a mask but um, altered so they fit the ball um, standards right adam uh, actually at the ball we had regulations that um, 
I people need to come with the mask on, but inside at the event itself they can put it down. So, uh -huh. yeah. and uh, but yeah, and we had to check the COVID passes before the event. So yeah. So we were quite sure that there's there are no uh, dangerous people. <laughs> um, and yeah, as for cosplays, um, we are our cosplay contest is part of uh, European Cosplay Gathering, and um, uh, the Clara Cow Cosplay Contest at AnimeCon in Netherlands, uh, and none of these has had finals for last two years, so it was like. It was the same for us, so we are now getting back on the track with them. And, but I know about some cosplayers uh, who qualified for ECG finals in at their local events, like at the end of 2019. They qualified for 2020 finals, and they are still waiting for finals to happen. So. <laughs> Fortunately, we didn't have our qualifier event, so our cosplayers won't have to wait so so long. <laughs> but uh, that would be really interesting, for example, if someone qualified in 2020 and 2021. And, <laughs> and dropped cosplaying, for example. Yeah. yeah. You would have to like improvise and choose someone else, I, I guess. But, and yeah, we didn't start with uh, uh, like applications yet mm, so I don't know how many cosplayers will uh, like apply for event but I hope that we will fill at least yeah, like in previous years that we usually had some 30 or 40 cosplayers in the in the contest so I hope this will be similar. And uh, are you still doing the main stage in Rotunda, or did that change? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's still our main stage because it's the nicest place that's available. <laughs> it's really nice, and it has like a rotating podium, uh, which cosplayers enjoy. Uh, but it's only for, I think, five hundred people. So a few years back, we started like live streaming of what's going on in the on the main stage, and we stream it to other halls where we have place for two thousand people. So yeah, so that's sort of uh, balancing that we have a nice place which is small, so that we at least try to stream it on site oh, we got the same issue with the main hall yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we also stream it outside yeah we also stream it to the second stage uh as an overflow area because when the hall's full it's full <laughs> <laughs> and what about danny knight and your competitions uh last year we did tell the final of iccc I was glad that it worked out. Um, we've got no information, sadly, what's up with uh, World Cosplay Summit. Mm -hmm. Because uh, Japan is... Uh, they're trying, but last year they had some problems with their online competition. And we're hoping for the best, but we're still waiting. Uh, So yeah, but our own competitions are uh, are running kind of like normal, I would say. We got lots of people who already want to who to participate. Uh, we got a few other competitions on the sides. So we got a broad uh, amount of uh, competitions. 
Uh, Great. Our, our situation, because we have to move the anime show from March to July. So, yeah, we already had applications and people wanted to participate, but uh, we postponed the, uh, the deadlines again. So, people have now more time to finish their cosplays and maybe those who weren't ready back then can uh, apply at this later date. So I hope for the best that it will improve the number and the quality of cosplays and also other uh, competitions. Well, one of the advantages of the date in July, because it's the first till 3rd of July actually now, is that uh, it will be much warmer than in March. So we won't uh, we won't have to um, take into consideration that in the afternoons it might, might get colder or it might even get snowing. That happened sometimes in the past. And um, also I think because it will be holiday so people will be more relaxed. So um, because we are used to doing the convention actually during the school year. So uh, this will be another, I think, advantage. For the convention, I, I really um, I see the difference. For example, when you got in Austria at the convention during summer, that people are so relaxed that they don't have to take into consideration school and exams and things. So, yeah, absolutely. The years before, we were the last uh, holiday, uh, the last week, and right before school starts again. So people were even more trying to relax. And uh, now it's switched. Uh, we are in the middle of August. We still hope that people are as relaxed as on the other weekend. Uh, let's see. Um, how is it with um, accommodation at your convention? I mean, all of you. Because uh, um, with the rising number of uh, visitors, I think uh, the vacate or the free places get um, full really quickly. How does it work? How do you manage to um, have enough space to accommodate people and also uh, deal with? Uh, because there always happens that someone orders like three, 30 rooms and resells them for higher price. How do you deal with this uh, issue? We haven't had the problem with resellers uh, yet. Yet. <laughs> yet. Now that knock you mention it, we can. <laughs> yeah. knock, knock on wood, but for now we don't have the problem. Uh, we have uh, the event, py event Pyramide Füssendorf right next at the location, connected with our location, uh, where we, where, well, we book out the whole complete hotel. Um, on the, our website, uh, people who want to book a, a room can get a better quote. And in case they don't want a room right next to the location, two minutes uh, from the location is the Badnerbahn, driving right next in the middle to Vienna. And yeah, we're kind of filling hotels along the road. <laughs> That's true. I must share my experience if I will. And so we had problems with these resellers actually. Uh, also, uh, when we were in the previous venue, because someone ordered 40 rooms and then was selling a room that was costing like uh, at that time 500 crowns for 2000. It was before we got Euro. And since then, uh, what we do that we book out two or three hotels. Yes. And uh, the orders go through us not financially. The people even get a better quote because we, we make the hotel full. So um, if they uh, look at the price on booking or the site, they're always asking why is the price different? That's because, well, it's through us. So it's um, more work to do. That uh, we have to communicate and uh, take care of it, but. Uh, it's much, much better uh, for the people to get enough space. Also, uh, 
Previously, uh, we were doing this, or yeah, we are still doing it. The finances are not going through us, but previously it was just a reservation. But we also had a problem that someone reserved the room and didn't attend, and like 20% of people were this irresponsible. So now the hotels are asking for a reservation fee. So, and that helped a lot. That nearly 100% people who reserved the, the place also come there. But still, we have to deal with like three hotels because there's not enough room in one or two. Absolutely. And how is it in Brno? Because I know uh, I, I, I experienced some problems with this in the past. I, yeah, I was checking a few days ago and there are still some places in, <laughs> in Brno for our dates. Uh, fortunately, we are like since we are located at the exhibition ground, there are at least four hotels just outside the gate uh, and many more around the city. Um, so we are not um, like communi communicating with the hotels directly, but we let people find their own hotel or whatever. There are quite a lot of hostels around. And some in previous years, some hotels like offered special prices with some like code. Um, not this time, I guess they want to raise money after their break. <laughs> and but also for people who are okay with sleeping in sleeping bags, we use each year like order a school nearby with a lot of uh, empty space so we have space for i guess 1000 people with their sleeping bags who can like drop at the school and thank uh, fortunately the school director is so kind that the price is so low that we don't charge people anything for this and also because we are we don't want to be bothered with organizing who is who has reservation in school and not and changing it so like if there is a space just go there and put your sleeping bag there and just stay there um I'm not sure if it will be possible this year. We are still waiting for confirmation because, again, uh, schools and gyms are now used as uh, emergency accommodation for refugees. But hopefully the government will find place for them, like better place for them than just a school gym. So, yeah. Yes, we sorry. Uh, we had a big no from our schools to to put people in the back. Also for this year. Mm -hmm. And do you organize somehow the, the accommodation for the? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, we have agreements with uh, two ho hotels and several. Apartments, and we have, uh, let's say, a great discount for for that uh, ap apartments and uh, hotels, and uh, and we put people in that places. But also now prices are, let's say, almost higher than in 2019 because people want to earn money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, that's happening all everywhere, I think. Yes. For example, we also offer the sleeping in sleeping bags, but um, previously we did it at schools, but uh, we ran into problems that uh, at some point the director of the school didn't want to do it, so we met agreement with the venue where we are, uh, so they offered us that we can put in them in some room if we take care of them. But uh, from uh, the previous years, the number of people who are sleeping there is constantly uh, going down. 
more and more people are uh, want to go either to a hotel or a hostel or something else where they can afford better quality of sleeping. So I'm quite happy for that actually. Uh, but yeah, that yeah, it means less work. <laughs> well, yeah, and that... also less stress because um, you know. Although the venue has all showers and everything that's needed uh, for people to, well, not to smell after the entire day, um, it's still um, a hassle that you have uh, to have in them in some room. Someone uh, has to be there to take care of them. If something happens, um, you are responsible. Also, healthcare and everything. Uh, system. Yeah. yeah. And this... Yeah, also because of like even COVID ended in some countries, then I guess this year we um, have to like has better check of hygiene and more disinfectation and stuff like that. So, and also I from the other side, I me personally, I prefer uh, like I'm too I'm getting too old to sleep at gym, <laughs> so I. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I must share one experience. Uh, Ivan, we were together uh, um, at Piercon in uh, in Poland. There were really uh, 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 um, imagine you get uh, at this expo in Brno, the pavilion. Uh, so they rented two or three just for sleeping, and there were thousands of people sleeping in sleeping beds, and it was really working. I, it, I was really amazed. That's one wonderful con to visit and see how things are working, really. But I'm still happy that we don't have the sleeping bags uh, in such high demand. <laughs> yeah. Yes, but, but they, uh, they, they also can't have that for, for this year, and that's the problem for them right now. Mm. I, I think they didn't have the convention for the last two years as well, I think, right? Yes. Yeah. They... Uh, they moved uh, this year in June. Mm. Well, okay. Peťo, nejde internet. Also, Michael, can you, can you check your... Uh, I'm back. Uh, there was a blackout of internet. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll check it right after then. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, everything I see. The television has problems with Netflix. Oh, yeah. Unmute yourself, Robert. <laughs> uh, aha, I'm muted. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so I'm back. And there is another Robert I see. Okay. I see six tiles. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> okay, um, so um, I think we are over the over time. So thank you very much for uh, attending this discussion. I will be looking forward to, uh, to visit each of your conventions myself this year. <laughs> Finally, be able to travel <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> and um, if you want to have a last word and say something to the Viewers, please take your chance. <laughs> Adam. Yeah, I guess I want to invite everyone to Brno in May and we hope it will be nice convention with nice weather and a lot of nice people. <laughs> Ivan? Uh, I would like to invite all of people to every con because we didn't have any convention in two years, and I think on each convention it will be great and fun. 
and the art convention is on the 13th to 15th May. Yes. Right? Yes. And Anime Fest is 22nd. 20. 20, 20. 20 sec yeah. Okay. And uh, so my that's dear two weeks. And who's next? <laughs> Austrian guys. <laughs> you are in August. Yeah, we are from 12th to 14th of August. And we're hoping for many visitors. We're hoping for a fun time, happy partners, happy merchants, happy artists, happy cosplayers. Okay. And we are on the 1st to the 3rd of July. So, yeah. The conventions are in different time and space. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Okay. Thank you very much for coming and see you in person at the Arcon.